For this Halloween, I want to sew my costume again. If you haven't seen the one from last year, then you can click right here to check it out. The only thing is, I don't want to sew something just for this purpose. I would like to sew an outfit that I can wear daily, so it won't be a waste. I decided to sew a shirt and a dress, so this Halloween video will be in two parts. Let's start with the shirt. I'm using the Melia blouse free pattern from Mood Fabrics. There aren't any proper instructions as it's a free pattern, but in this video, I will explain to you all the steps. First, I will start by modifying the pattern of the shirt sleeves. Instead of having puff sleeves, I will modify the pattern to have simple sleeves. For that, I mark the middle of the sleeves and put the two pieces together like this. Then I mark the two ends. I measure how much my sleeve gather exceeds from the side of the sleeves. Then I divided this measurement by two. So for me, I have eight centimeters exceeding from the sides. So it's four centimeters when I divide by two. I find the middle of my sleeve gather piece and mark four centimeters twice. And I trace perpendicular lines by the marks. I do the same process on the other side. Then I fold the middle line and the first two lines on the sides of the center line. After that, I attach the two pieces by the center and then I align the sleeve gather piece side with the sleeve side like this. And the middle part should fold. Then I tape the side to secure it. I repeat the same process on the other side and tape the middle fold part to secure it. Your simple sleeve is ready! Now I can place my pattern pieces on the fabric and cut all the pieces. Make sure to place the back piece, the collar stand and the collar on the fold of your fabric. Once I placed and pinned all the pieces on my fabric, I can cut them. Don't forget to cut the notches mentioned on the pattern as well. After that, I need to prepare interfacing pieces to go along the center front of my front shirt panels. For that, I measure the length of the front shirt panel, which is 23 inches for mine, and for the width is 2 inches if you measure between the two notches. Then, I trace this on the interfacing fabric to have two pieces and cut them. I also prepare interface and fabric for the collar and the collar stand. For these pieces, I only prepared one of each, but if you would like to reinforce more your fabric, then you can prepare two pieces for each. Now let's iron the interface and fabric. I place the interfacing at the first notch and by leaving a gap of half an inch as shown here. Now I can press. I fold by half an inch and press again. Here I cut the excess interface and fabric and cut the notches again. Then I fold by one inch and press. A little tip here. The folded edge should join the other interface and edge when you iron. I repeat the same process on the other front piece. I will do a top stitch on the front shirt panels here. I also iron the interfacing on the collar and the collar stand pieces. We can start assembling the parts. Here I take the collar pieces and place them right sides together. I pin around as shown here and so. Then I cut the corners and the excess fabric on the sides. 
Now I can turn the collar the right way around and push the corners gently. Once that's done, I iron the collar. I place one of the collar stands right side up, then I put the collar on top like this. After, I take the second collar stand and place it on top right side down. Here the collar is in a sandwich between the two collar stands. I pin all the layers and sew as shown here. After that, I cut the excess fabric and turn it the right way around. Then I iron the collar stand to flatten it. Once that's done, fold the raw edges 1 cm from the edge and iron. Now I take one of my front pieces and as you can see we have two notches on the side and a pin that I placed to mark the dot that was mentioned on the pattern. The goal here is to mark a triangle shape between the two notches and the dot point. For that, I will press by folding my front from one notch to the dot point and do the same thing from the second notch to the dot point. Here you have the triangle shape for the dot. Now I fold in half by joining the two lines like this and pin all the way down to the dot point. I repeat the same thing on the other front piece and sew. Once I finish sewing, I use my tailor's hand to press the seams. Now to assemble the front pieces to the back, I place them right sides together. Then I pin the shoulders and the sides and sew. Then I press the seams. Now I can overlock the shoulders and the sides. Here I take one of the sleeves and fold it like this in half, right sides together. Then I pin along the edge and I do the same on the other sleeve. After that, I sew and overlock the pin edges. Then I press the seams. Now let's assemble the sleeves. Here you have several notches. One notch on the side is for the front, one notch on the top is for the top sleeve and double notches is for the back. Place your shirt wrong side up and take your sleeve right side up and place it inside like this. Align the seams and the top notch with the shoulder seam. The one notch should face the front piece and the double notches the back piece. Damping all around both sleeves, sew and overlock.
For my shirt, I didn't want to use this cuff pattern, so I'm making my own. Here, I check the measurement of my end sleeve. I have 11.5 centimeters. So for the whole circumference, I have 23 centimeters. To draw my pattern, I doubled the height of this curve pattern 7.5 times 2 and added 2 cm seam allowance. So 17 cm in height and 25 cm in length. I cut 2 pieces of fabric for the cuffs and 2 interfaces. When all the pieces are ready, I iron the interfacing onto the fabric pieces. Now I take the color piece, open the fold and place it like this on the raw edges of the shirt. I pin all the way down and sew. Once that's done, I fold the collar piece like this and insert the seams inside the collar piece. I pin on the other side as we are going to top stitch this part. I do this all the way down and then top stitch carefully. I take one of the curves and fold the edges 1 cm from the edge and iron. I repeat this process on the other cuff as well. I open the fold and fold it back right sides together and pin the sides. I don't pin the folded edges because I'm going to sew only in between the fold crease and the bottom fold. Then I sew the sides. After sewing, I cut the excess fabric and turn the right way around by pushing the corners gently. Then I open the fold and place it like this on the raw edges of the cuff. I pin all around and do the same process on the other sleeve. After, I sew. Once I sew the cuffs on the sleeves, I do the same process as the collar. I put the seams inside the cuff and fold the cuff like this. I don't pin all around as I'm going to hand sew. This is what it looks like. You can top stitch if you want, but I prefer it like this. Now let's move on to the hem part. First, I fold one centimeter from the edge and iron all the way down, and then I fold it once again by one centimeter and iron. After ironing, I top stitch. To place the bottom holes, I first measure 2.5 cm from the collar, then place a pin to mark it. Then I measure 6 cm in between each pin for the button holes. Once I have all my marks, I can sew my button holes.
If you enjoyed watching this video, then please like, subscribe and share this video to support my channel. See you next week for part two. Bye bye.